going to take a look at comparing fractions to equations. So again, we're going to make a new tab and we're going to title that equations. Positive and copy this down. Alright, so looking at the first one, how do I find domain and range given this? Well, the first thing you always do is go y equals, plug it in. Just remember every time you have a fraction, put it in parentheses. And then hit um, graph. And then it will show you the graph. So again, what I did is hit y equals, then hit graph. Now, if the graph isn't fine, you have to set the window up. And remember, our go to is negative 10, 10, 1, negative 10, 10, 1. That doesn't work. You could always zoom in. You could do zoom fit by hitting zoom, right? And then you can zoom out. So hit zoom again. And then you can hit zoom out, press enter, press enter again, and zoom out. Forward. So you can see that it's just a straight line. It's a linear equation. Um, as it's a completely straight line. So I'm going to sketch it. So I'm going to draw it exactly, just sketch it. And now let's look at domain and range. So remember, domain is x, so I'm going to color the x axis. And then look completely on the left, is there a line if I extend it? Yes, there is. If I go down, there's a line right there. So it's negative infinity. Same thing for the right hand side. It's all real numbers. Do the same thing for y. At the bottom, is there a graph? Yes, there is. So it starts at negative infinity. Is there a graph there? Yes, there is. So again, all real numbers. Alright, same thing with every single one of them. You're just going to go y equals, plug it in. Anytime you have a um, fraction, you put it in parentheses. Raised to the power of, make sure everything that's the power is on the top. Alright, I'm going to play around with the window. So window, I'm going to do zoom fit, press enter. Okay, that's crazy. I'm trying to zoom in out. So I get zoom, zoom out, press enter, press enter again. That still looks crazy, so I'm still going to play with the window. So I'm going to hit window, and I'm just going to make those numbers smaller. And you just mess around with it to get what you so I'm going to do like negative 100, positive 100. Um, let's do these numbers are really small, so like uh, I put a minus. So I put negative or two positive. Four. Let's get that balance. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to do a sketch of what that is. It's a listening check. Color in the word domain on the left hand side. So it has an isotope, but I expect the isotope to be at negative 4. And how do I know that? Because the isotope is always the plus or minus of the thing. That's always your isotope. You that. The isotope is where the line never touches. But is there an isotope on the y-axis? So I need to zoom in to look. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna change the min to negative 10, see what that does. Nothing, okay. It's a little bit better. See, it crosses the um, y-axis. So I'm gonna change my graph to um, better show you what I'm talking about. You see how it crosses? So it doesn't go straight up like the way I have it in my sketch. I'm going to correct my sketch so it looks like that. Okay, and you're going to have to play around with it to, you know, to see what it looks like. Alright, so now I can do my domain and range. Extend the line both ways. The domain is going to be coloring the x-axis. Then pick a point outside the graph on the left. Is there a graph there? If I go up, there's going to be a graph there. And then all the way to the right, yes, there's a graph everywhere. It's so all real numbers. Same thing with the y, coloring your y-axis. Pick a point all the way at the bottom. Is there a graph there? No. No, no. It doesn't start until past the isotope, which is negative 4. It doesn't include the isotope, so you're going to do open something. And then is there a graph at the top? Yes, there is everywhere. So open because it doesn't include. Alright, same thing with the last one. Again, all you're going to do is y equals fractions in uh, parentheses and type it all in. Take graph. And you might have to play the window again. So negative 10, 10, 1, negative 10, 10, 1. You might have to zoom a bit. Kind of change the numbers a little bit. Until you kind of see something that you can sketch. So now I'm going to sketch that. The listening check color in the circled plus 8. And remember, your negative 8 is going to be, or your plus 8, I'm sorry, is going to be your Y in the center. Right, so it crosses at Eight, but what's the bottom number? I don't know what that is. So I'm going to hit second, calculate, and it's my minimum. I'm going to go left, enter, right, enter. Minimum is two. Or one point nine nine nine. That's my minimum is two, but it intersects the y axis. So just to tell you what I did, I hit second, calculate, minimum, left bound, enter, right bound, enter, and then enter again. It gave me my minimum. So again, domain is color that in. So all the way on the left, is there a graph? Yes. If I go up, 
left is a graph right now. All the way on the right is a graph, yes, so all the way on My range, color in the y axis, start at the bottom. Is there a graph there? No. No, no, no. It doesn't start until two. And it includes two, so we're going to do a closed bracket or a closed parenthesis. And then it goes on forever. All right, so I'm looking at rate of change, same thing as before. Um, only thing is, it's even better from this because you can look at it from right at table. So you're going to go y equals again, and then you're going to hit second table, and then it's going to give you the numbers that you need. So y equals, type in the equation, hit second table. I graphed it, but you don't have it. Hit second table. And see, those are all the points. Now, x is 3 and 5, so you're going to look at what y is when x is 3 and 5. So I'm just going to write them underneath. So I write y1 and y2. When x is 3, y is 0. When x is 5, y is negative 4. And now you're just going to plug in the numbers. So y2 is negative 4 minus y1 is 0. All over x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is 0. Plug it in the calculator, simplify it. This is a listening check color in the box that has y equals on the left hand side of the page. Same thing here, y equals, plug in the equation, second table. Then label x1, x2, and then underneath it y1, y2. So when x1 is 1, y2 is 2. When x2 is 3, y2 is negative 154. Gonna put that in the calculator. One negative one fifty four minus two negative one six over two, which is negative seven. One last question. So rate of change again. Y equals plug in the equation. So it doesn't matter if it's linear, exponential, quadratic. Plug in the equation. Hit second table. Get your values. Label x1, x2, and then find y1, y2, when x is negative 1, y is. And if you don't see it, they have to go up, so negative 2. When x is 2, y is negative 5. And then you just plug it in the numbers. Be careful with the signs, you plug it all in. And put the whole thing in the calculator. Don't even try and do it back in. That's our final answer of negative 1. I'm sure you have Okay, one final thing I did forget to do earlier. When you have a linear equation, it's y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. For exponentials, you have y equals a parentheses b raised to the power of x, where b is the rate of change, and a is your y-intercept. And for quadratic, you have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is going to be your second difference divided by 2. You need to remember that one. Your second difference divided by 2 and C is your y-intercept. And that's pretty much all we have to do. Let's practice.